Life just got a heck of a lot harder for all those VS Code forks that you know and love. Yes, believe it or not, Microsoft just open sourced their AI editor. What they mean with this is they're about to start open sourcing all of the GitHub Copilot chat pieces that are in VS Code. And that's not the end of the things they announced. They also announced that they're open sourcing Windows subsystem for Linux, which is really cool. This is a huge philosophical change for Microsoft. I was lucky enough to chat with them a little bit about what's going on. And I have a ton that I want to share with you guys, both from the philosophy of why Microsoft is doing these things to the impact it will have on a bunch of companies you know that I talk about a lot here. I'm also an investor in a bunch of those companies, and this might be the end of them. So uh, someone has to pay the bills. We're going to do a quick sponsor break and then dive into all of the things you need to know about this change. AI has made a lot of things easier, but it made one thing significantly harder. Interviewing. Yes, recruiting is in a terrible place right now. If you've opened up a job listing on your site, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You're suddenly getting tens of thousands of applicants with terrible AI-generated resumes and trying to find the good ones in the pile is nearly impossible. Trying to hire a great engineer feels like just a nonstop hill you're climbing up. Unless you use today's sponsor. G2i has solved hiring. I know it's a crazy statement, but honestly, all of the people that I've been talking to that started using G2i have been blown away with them. So you could take my word for it, or we can just read some of these crazy testimonials. ShopMonkey said that they made 17 hires in 60 days. Do you know how crazy that is? especially to not have to fire half of them after because you hired too quickly. If these are just random junior engineers with no experience or vibe coders that have no background, that'd be one thing, but that's not the case at all. G2i has been working for eight years to build up their pool of over 8,000 experienced engineers. These are people with real industry experience all over the stack, backend, frontend, mobile, web, whatever the heck you guys are doing, there's a very good chance you have a bunch of awesome engineers that are already part of G2i's network. The coolest part though is the video platform. Once you've decided you want to hire for a given role, you write up a bunch of questions, you give them some stuff that's important to you, and then G2i goes out and gives those questions to a bunch of the engineers in their network, and then you get to use their app to go through all of these interviews with all of these people where humans are answering the question on video so you can get an actual idea of what this person is like to work with. They're not just handing you a list of names and saying good luck, they're doing most of the hard work for you. From the vetting to the interview, they will smooth the process out. They'll even spin up a shared Slack channel with you as part of their default process. They've said for a bit now that from starting working with them to first PR from your new hire is seven days. My favorite thing about the platform though, and I wish we could do this more realistically for traditional roles, when you do decide you like somebody, you bring them on for seven days, and if they're not shipping the way you want them to, you don't have to pay a cent. And if you want someone different, they will backfill within the week. Remote or in-person, back-end or front-end, contract or full-time, whatever you need, these guys will hire in days instead of months. Give them a shot today at soydev.link slash g2i. So why is Copilot going open source? We've talked about parts of this before, but I think it's important to like quickly understand what VS Code being open source meant in the first place. VS Code is an open source editor that a lot of people use. It's probably the most popular editor ever made at this point. It's open source, which is awesome because you can fork it. It's MIT licensed. You can do a ton of cool things to it. But for the most part, we have been extending VS Code with the extensions API, which is a way to add a widget into the side of VS Code that has an iframe that can do things. Occasionally, it's stuff like language servers or themes and whatnot. But historically, we've been relatively limited with what we can do using extensions. So as such, the effective role of VS Code being open source was so that people could see the code, make changes to things that were broken, and contribute with like the team making it. But it wasn't like a bunch of people were using that code to do things, that they were fixing things wrong with it. That is until one big thing happened. I mean, so what we're talking about today, it's Copilot. Copilot kind of changed the game. The idea of your editor writing your code with you and for you was huge and immediately resulted in an explosion of things trying to do the same. The first attempts were mostly also VS Code extensions. The problem was that you needed a really deep integration with VS Code to have a good experience to do things like tab complete jumping to the thing that you want to change or having like the diffs inlined underneath the thing that is changing. So despite VS Code being open source and the extension platform being very well established, the capabilities of the platform did not align up with the things people wanted. And slowly, Copilot had to diverge from the traditional extension path, and it had a bunch of special stuff built into VS Code that they could use that other extensions couldn't. So what just changed? I want to be very clear about what hasn't changed, first and foremost. So Copilot 
server backend is still closed source. So if you think you can get the whole co-pilot experience backend, frontend servers, management of tokenization and like context windows and all the chaos that it takes to build something like this, they were very explicit that that is not what they are doing here. The magic of the co-pilot servers and APIs is not something we get any insight into, but that's not actually something I care that much about. The other important piece is, is that this hasn't happened fully yet. So this wasn't like, oh, here's the code. It's all open source now. You can do whatever you want. This is the announcement of the plan to start changing these things. And one of the big things they plan to change, which again, is not done yet, but they are working on it and want the community to be involved is the opening up of the APIs that Copilot uses. They do very much intend to make it so a third party that's willing to build their own servers, handle the inference stuff themselves, could get the same quality of experience in VS Code that Copilot has. In order to do that before, you had to fork VS Code, which is why we saw so many forks from Void to Pair to Windsurf to, of course, Cursor. I'm invested in three of the four I just mentioned. This is going to be a fun window for all of those. That said, this also kind of levels the playing field. As crazy as it sounds to say Microsoft came in and potentially directly harmed the plans and business models for all of those companies, this means more businesses can compete more effectively. If you don't have to build a whole editor and manage a whole VS Code ecosystem forked out from scratch yourself, which means you have to let go of things like the marketplace, you have to manage security incidents and pull in the changes by hand, you have to deeply understand VS Code to do that. Now, you can just make a new extension that has a similar quality of experience. One way of thinking of this is like the what capability and quality was possible. Let's say we have a chart showing the quality that's possible with different solutions. If you are Copilot, we'll say Copilot's quality is here. The so Copilot is this good. If you were just building an AI extension on VS Code before the things that are announced today get shipped, the quality you're capable of shipping was much, much lower than what Copilot can do. So if you wanted to meet this bar that Copilot had set, if you saw the line there and you wanted to build something that was as good, if not better, you really couldn't because we were limited by this bar, the quality of what was possible via an extension. So in order to get past that, in order to get to where Copilot was at and theoretically go even further, you had to fork. And this is the problem that the Microsoft team saw. VS Code fork. It is significantly more capable if you fork VS Code and you have the team that's capable of doing it and managing it. We've seen all the crazy stuff you can do and stuff like, you know, Cursor. I love it. It's a really good editor experience. The problem is that maintaining a VS Code fork has a ton of consequences and problems, and it also means the entry point to do this is really high. We could also frame this as like, how hard is it to build these different things? And honestly, the current chart would kind of represent that as well. Building and maintaining a fork of VS Code is really hard if you don't have the budget of a team like the Copilot team at Microsoft. What Microsoft's trying to do here is they want to take the AI extensions and the idea of people building things like that, new integrated experiences like Klein. Think, think things like Klein and Augment Code. If you're not familiar, Klein is an agent that you can install as an extension inside of VS Code. It's also open source, which is really cool. And then there's Augment Code, who has been a sponsor of the channel that I quite enjoy using. They're one of the few AI like code things I use outside of Cursor because they do an incredible job of indexing gigantic code bases. They're not paying for this video. I just really like using them to download an open source repo and try to figure out how it implemented something. So things like that are currently very limited by what they can do in VS Code because they effectively just have the iframe API. So what Microsoft's trying to do is pull this out so it can get to the same quality level as Copilot. Does that mean they can go as far as a VS Code fork? Probably not. But at the very least, wherever the bar is set for Copilot, over time, the capability of extensions is going to get to the same place, which is a very exciting change. Let's quickly read what they have to say about this so it's not just my thoughts and words. We believe the future of code editors should be open and powered by AI. For the last decade, VS Code has been one of the most successful open source projects on GitHub. We are grateful for our vibrant community of contributors and users who choose VS Code because it is open source. As AI becomes core to the developer experience in VS Code, we intend to stay true to our founding development principles. Open, collaborative, and community driven. We will open source the code in the GitHub Copilot chat extension under MIT. This is something I meant to call out earlier. They're not just open source, they're MIT licensed, which means you can do whatever you want with them. It's nice to see them not change that. They could have done a license that was like, 
You can make whatever you want with this, but you can't sell a competing product. There's a lot of companies that have licenses like that. They just went MIT, so you're still able to fork. You could even make the argument that building your own cursor just got a lot easier due to the stuff that they are planning to do here, as they were saying. Once they've open sourced this, they plan to carefully refactor the relevant components of the extension into VS Code Core. So the parts that are currently allowing for a lot of the custom integrations for the cool like autocomplete inline stuff, all the things that make the Copilot chat extension unique are going to start making their way into VS Code Core so other extensions can take advantage of them. As they said, this is the next and logical step for us in making VS Code an open source AI editor. The reflection that AI powered tools are core to how we write code, a reaffirmation of our belief that working in the open leads to a better product for our users and fosters a diverse ecosystem of extensions. Really cool to see. The obvious next question is why now? When we have cursor raising a ton, we have windsurf maybe getting bought. Still haven't gotten an update on that, by the way. I think it's happening. The rumors have gone way too far for them to not, but it's interesting. I think after this news, especially, they're going to want to take that deal. Then there's Peri and Void, which are also both open source VS Code forks focused on AI experience and AI code stuff. I haven't heard much from either of those, which is concerning. <laughs> so with all of that going on, why now? They were pretty transparent about this, which I thought was cool. Over the last few months, we've observed shifts in AI development that motivated us to transition our AI dev in VS Code from closed to open source. The biggest point, and I think this is really important to understand, is that LLMs have been continuously significantly improving. So the secret sauce that made Copilot work in the past matters a lot less. Prompts are going open constantly now. More and more, I'm seeing companies saying, screw it, who cares if our prompt gets shared? It's not that special anymore. As the models get better, the system prompts, I'm not saying they don't matter. I'm saying they, they are less secretive and they are less uniquely valuable, especially as a new model comes out, your old system prompt in order to fix things like weird diffing might just not work at all, especially now that models like GPT 4.1 are trained on get diffs so they can do diffing syntax directly instead of having to rewrite the whole file. Previously, Copilot was using like a custom model derived from GPT 3 that had a ton of system prompts to make it function at all. I'm sure that was essential to why they decided to keep it closed source at the time that barely matters anymore. There are lots of companies with better AI editing experiences than where Copilot was. The next point they had is that the most popular and effective UX treatments for AI interactions are now common across editors. Yes, it took a bit for us to get to that point, but all the things we now expect in our AI experience, like command I to open the sidebar, command K to autocomplete from here, tab to blast through the changes, all of those things are relatively standard and you can hop from windsurf to cursor to Copilot and not feel like you're entirely in a new world. We want to enable the community to refine and build these common UI elements by making them available in a stable and open code base. Huge. An ecosystem of open source AI tools and VS Code extensions has emerged. We want to make it easier for these extension authors to build, debug, and test their extensions. This is especially challenging today without access to the source code in the Copilot chat extension. This is another point I think is really worth considering. When Microsoft looks at two types of companies. If we have Windsurf and Cursor on one side, and we have Klein and Augment on the other, this is who Microsoft wants to have win. But right now, these guys are very much winning. And there is a reason for that. It's because these guys are doing things Microsoft doesn't like that they can win. Since they chose to fork, since they chose to do the hard thing and rebuild VS Code and manage the fork that you have done from it, they now get a benefit that Klein and Augment don't. They can make the changes and make the quality of experience that Copilot has when these companies couldn't. So if Microsoft sees this as an imbalance where they want these guys to win and they want these guys to fail, this is the most logical thing they could possibly do. This is particularly funny to me because in my video on Windsurf, my like final hot take was that the best thing OpenAI could do would be open source it because there wasn't a big open source player in the AI editor space yet. Now there is. Now the biggest open source editor is also the biggest open source AI editor. Well, at least it's getting there. I think this is the most important point to take home from here. Not that Microsoft necessarily wants to kill these companies and destroy them, more that they want companies doing the, the right thing, building into the VS Code ecosystem. They don't want them to be at a disadvantage. They want to make it easier for more companies like this to find more success and build better experiences within VS Code. But in order to do that, they have to open up more which is why they chose to do it.
There's a couple more quick points that I thought were interesting. They want to share more of how the chat extension actually collects data and where the data is being sent to and from to give you a better idea with just more transparency if you could read the code. That's a cool thing to see. And also malicious actors who have been targeting these AI dev tools. If it's open source, it's easier for us to scan through to find problems and also identify fixes and go through the whole process of how exploitations happen. Really cool to see. Coming weeks, we will work to open source the code in the GitHub Copilot chat extension, as well as refactor the AI features from the extension into VS Code directly. Our core priorities remain intact, deliver great performance, powerful accessibility, and an intuitive, beautiful user interface. Open source works best when communities are built around a stable and shared foundation. That's the key. Since Cursor and Windsurf aren't open source, they're all an uh, increasingly broken off fork of VS Code, the community is no longer building around this single shared center point, and they want that to change. They want the same VS code everywhere. And the selfish reasons why are actually a lot smaller than you might think. It's stuff like the C++ extension that they maintain breaking because Cursor does some specific thing that was patched in VS code a while ago. They never backfilled. That type of stuff is just annoying when the foundation isn't shared. There's a huge part of why Linux did so well. It's also a huge part of why I have a grudge against Android because they hard forked the Linux kernel. The more we can share that foundation, the better we can be as a community in iterating and building on top of a thing. And then the stated goal, as I've been saying, their goal is to make contributing AI features as simple as contributing to any part of VS Code. The stochastic nature of large language models makes it especially challenging to test AI features and prompt changes. To ease this, we'll also make our prompt testing infra open source to ensure the community PRs can build and pass tests too. That's really cool. They shared their whole iteration plan publicly. So if you're the type of person that wants to keep up with the details of how this is all being implemented, it's all there if you want to do it, which is really, really cool. This complements the agent mode stuff they also officially released today really well. The idea of a fully agentic VS Code experience being open source is super exciting. WSL going open source is just, again, showing their commitment to open source and building on a shared foundation. And then there was one other thing I didn't mention. I probably should have put it in the intro. Edit. Yes, Microsoft released a Vim competitor today that is open source, which is kind of crazy that Microsoft found that it was worthwhile to build their own CLI editing experience. I also love that it pays homage to the MS-DOS editor. This looks really cool. It's something I plan to play with later. Let me know what you guys think about it and if you want a whole dedicated video. That's all I got for now. Wait, it's in Rust? Oh. <laughs> this is wild. Oh, Microsoft. Oh, there's always something to talk about, isn't there? Well, thanks for joining me on my day off. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know what you think. And until next time, peace nerds.